Now when you're being asked to express a fraction, like any of these ones you see here, impartial fractions, what you've got to do is determine what kind of partial fraction each is going to give rise to. And that is determined by the type of factor that you have in the bottom of the fraction, in the denominator. Okay? And we have several types that I'm going to show you. Now the first type you're going to meet is what is often referred to as a linear factor. Linear factors are of the form ax plus b where a and b are constants. And in this particular example you'll notice in the denominator we have two factors and they both have that particular form ax plus b. We have a 1x plus 2 here. Okay, So a would be 1 and b would be the 2. And in this one 1x minus 3, a would be 1 and b would obviously be minus 3. Now whenever you have linear factors, okay, like this, ax plus b, they always give rise to a constant over the ax plus b. So in other words, our first linear factor is x plus 2, so this will end up giving us a partial fraction of the form of a constant, which I'll call a, over the linear factor x plus 2. And then we have another linear factor here, x minus 3, so you end up with another constant. We add another constant over that linear factor, x minus 3. Now in this particular fraction, you'll notice that I have three linear factors. And so this is much the same as the one up here, only it's going to have three constants. The first constant will be a over x minus 1. Then another constant would be b over the second linear factor, 3x plus 2. And finally, another constant, which we'll call c, over the 2x plus 1. OK, now we have that. OK, let's have a look at this fraction here. Now you notice that this is a bit different. It's got a squared on it. Okay, We've got one factor here which is a linear factor and indeed x minus 3 is a linear factor but this is x minus 3 times another x minus 3 so it's a linear factor that has been repeated and we call types like this, factors like this, repeated linear factors. And When you have a repeated linear factor, that is something of the form ax plus b all squared, you always get a partial fraction or partial fractions of the form of a constant over ax plus b plus another constant over ax plus b all squared. So I'll show you how that works out here. So this would be identical to, now, we'd have a constant which we'll call a over ax plus b and ax plus b in this particular case would be just simply the x minus 3. Then you have another constant, b, over the repeated factor, x minus 3, all squared. So that's the kind of partial fraction that you have to do for a repeated factor. But then on the end here, we've got another linear factor, which is not repeated. So according to the rule up here, you just have one more constant, we'll call it c, over the linear factor, which is 2x minus 1. And in this last example, the reason I chose this was just to show you that it doesn't matter whether you have your repeated factor first or your repeated factor at the end here. It's still going to be much the same kind of thing. First of all, we've got one linear factor, 3x minus 1. It's not repeated, so that would be just a constant, which we'll call a over 3x minus 1. Then we hit the repeated factor, so we'll have another constant, b over the linear factor, 5x plus 1. And then plus another constant, c over the repeated factor, 5x plus 1, all squared. Okay, now, once we've 
laid out the type of partial fractions that we get with any particular fraction, okay, what we'll need to do is find out what the constants A, B or possibly C are in any of these kind of questions. And in my next few tutorials I show you how to find A, B and C, the constants essentially, by various methods.